All right, guys. So we got the we got the ETF approval. And what did I say after we get the ETF approval? We'll probably pump a few thousand dollars. It looks like that's what we did. We pumped a few thousand dollars all the way up to like the $48,000 range. Now we're back down to the $46,000 range. Will we pump to $50,000 or all-time highs? I don't think so. I'm going to stick with my prediction I made it about a week ago. The only... The only thing that did surprise me was that altcoins did follow this pump. Um, I saw that Cardano went up to sixty cents and uh, XRP back up to sixty cents. So some of the altcoins actually, well, actually most of the altcoins did pump with this big Bitcoin pump. But if I was a betting man and I'm going to use my common sense, I think we're done. We got that pump up to forty eight thousand. Maybe we'll go back up to forty eight thousand. But I think. Uh, that was the resistance, and we're not going to go any, any higher than that. But again, I could be wrong, and maybe we'll go up to $50,000. But so far, my prediction has been spot on. You can't argue that. So we got the ETF approval. That's done now. Hopefully, we don't hear too much about it, more about it, because I'm sick of it. You know what we got to talk about today? Um, we're getting all these crazy high Bitcoin predictions. Here's Kathy Wood talking about a $600,000 to a $1.5 million Bitcoin in 2030 which is five, six years away. I mean, essentially she's talking about the next bull market because we're probably going to be in a bear market 2025, 2026. So she's talking like the next bull market after this one will be at almost a $1.5 million Bitcoin. I don't see it. I'm thinking maybe like 200,000, 250. Um, but here's what she's saying. Doug pricing, or I shouldn't say pricing, um, but the price of Bitcoin. You and I have had conversations now over many years where you've talked about Bitcoin being worth something on the order of five hundred thousand uh, dollars, literally in only a couple of years from now. Do you stand by that? How does this ETF uh, change that? Uh, speed that up? Slow it down? What do you think? Yes. Uh, so you'll find in our big ideas. So that's at arc-invest.com. The building blocks uh, for our price forecast. Uh, and our base case uh, is in the $600,000 range. Our bull case, uh, and we think the probability of the bull case has increased with this SEC approval. This is a green light. Our bull case is $1.5 million by 2030. You can. Yeah, so that's like a crazy prediction to me. So is it possible? Yeah. I've always said for the last couple of years what I think is probably going to happen in the next five, six years. And. Don't hold me to it, but this is one of my fears with cryptocurrency and Bitcoin is quantum computers. Once some jackass scientist from Yahoo, Google, the DOD comes up with a quantum computer, the first thing they're going to do is hack the, the Bitcoin blockchain. I'm sorry. That's what they're going to do. And that could probably happen in the next five, 10 years. And that's why I'm not super long-term bullish on Bitcoin. Um, there's money to be made. Definitely this bull market. Maybe there'll be another bull market where Bitcoin gets up to 500000 or something like that. But with Bitcoin, it's like, I'm not one of these like, buy Bitcoin and you look back in 20 years and you'll retire. You can't do that with Bitcoin. I mean, you can, but you really have to be paying attention. I mean, if I if in five years I see an article saying quantum, quantum computers are about to come out and some scientists just created it. Like I said, the first thing they're going to do is hack the blo hack, hack the blockchain, especially when the same people who are in Bitcoin are the same people who are in IT uh, um, and in computers. So I'm not super long-term bullish in Bitcoin, but I guess we could get that 1.5 million. If we don't have quantum computers by 2030 and everything goes perfectly, I guess we could get a million dollar Bitcoin by 2030. It's, I guess it's worth a risk. Um, but yeah, that's... Um, I don't know. Whenever I hear these crazy predictions, I get a little like skeeved out. All right. So, so far, as far as these uh, these ETFs, you got Grayscale, Invesco, Gal Galaxy leads as Bitcoin ETF debut. BlackRock's fund is in sixth place, which that's weird because you would think BlackRock would be number one, but I think it also do with fees. It says, here's the ranking of the 11 newly traded Bitcoin ETFs. Uh, Grayscale, number one. Then you got Invesco, Fidelity, Wisdom Tree, BlackRock, number six. Wow, there's a lot of them. So they're all approved. And I think right now they're just kind of fighting like over fees, like whichever, whoever has like the lowest fees, that's where people are going. So they approved all these ETFs. And let's check the Bitcoin price again, 46,367. I don't know, guys. I think it's going to play out exactly like I said. I think I said 48,000, 
forty-seven thousand, and then we're probably going to dump. Um, I could be wrong, like I said, but wow, these markets are doing exactly what I thought. But watch, watch us shoot right up to fifty thousand dollars the minute I publish this video. You know, I was listening to Crypto Rand this morning, and that, he's taking credit for giving everybody the GBTC trade, which. Everybody and their mother knew about the GBTC trade. I was in the GBTC trade talking about here, although I got out like a while ago. My father-in-law, who's like 70 years old, knows about the GBT. Like everybody knows about the GBT GBTC trade. It's like, if you've been in Bitcoin more than like a, a minute, you know that was a trade. It was kind of a risky trade because you didn't know what was going to happen with that fund. It could be shut down. There were high fees with that fund. So it was, one, it was just another risky trade that, Rand Nooner threw out there, but of course now that they're the fees are done, um, and it did well. The GBTC did well, just like MicroStrategy did well, Coinbase did well, everything Bitcoin related did well over the last year. Here's Rand Nooner trying to take credit for getting everybody into the GBTC trade. GBTC discount era, and this was one of the best trades that we've ever given you guys, because we told you guys to buy GBTC when the discount was about fifty percent, and if you did that you made over a hundred percent more than the bitcoin increase in price and we gave you that trade yeah ran you gave us that trade i gave that trade everybody in my family gave that trade every stockbroker gave that trade everybody who's been in bitcoin more than like 24 hours gave that trade and like i said it wasn't a sure thing that was it was a risky trade because anything could have happened with gbtc over the last year so, Ran, I just love these charlatans. They always come in after the fact, and they they pick the, the things that work. Like he, Rand Nooners talked about a hundred things: Luna, UST, all go to zero; Celsius, BlockFi, all go to zero. Then when it, when the dust settles, they pick the few things that did go up, and they try to take credit for it. I was like reading the comments here on on Gareth on um not Gareth um Rand's channel. Here's Bear Soloway erect. If you notice, I, I talked about this a couple of days ago. Gareth Soloway used to always go on Rand's channel and everybody's channel. He doesn't do any other channels anymore, uh, Gareth Soloway, except for Benjamin Cohen, who was another really bearish guy. I know everybody loves Benjamin Cohen, but if you remember, Benjamin Cohen was telling everybody that Bitcoin dominance was going to go up to 90%. All coins were going to zero. He's like, you're crazy if you buy all coins. Don't buy all coins. Just buy Bitcoin. Then Solana goes up 1,000%. Vulcan Forge. Uh, you know, goes up 500%. Uh, Cardano goes up 150%. Like everything like doubles. Like he did, he was like completely wrong to the point where if you had Benjamin Cowan or Gareth Soloway working for your fund or your like your, your hedge fund, you would have to fire them immediately. But it's funny that Benjamin Cowan and Gareth Soloway have now teamed up. The two guys who were the most wrong, nobody else wants to talk to them. So they kind of found each other. Like they're kind of meant for each other. You know, it's like, two fat pigs who were like hoarders, like they found each other and now they're just like in this love affair, but they were wrong. They were wrong. And it goes back to what I was saying yesterday. There are still people out there buying Gareth Soloway's and buying uh, Benjamin Cohen's course and you're all going to get wrecked. In fact, you already are wrecked. You're wrecked. You already got wrecked. Not, not happy about it, but I did warn you. All right, let's see what else is going on. There's not too much else. Guys, there's really not much else to talk about. I know the ETF is, is like the biggest news. Um, we're going down now. We are now we are dumping just like I said we would. I said spike up and I'm not going to find the video, but you have to go back and watch my video from yesterday and a couple days ago. I said, we're going to get a couple thousand dollars spike on, upon ETF approval. Then we're going to dump. Now it looks like that's what's happening. Will money come back in and push us back up to 50? <clears throat> uh, uh, I don't know, but I think this I think this ETF thing has played its course now, and I'm kind of glad. I want to see Bitcoin just settle around, around 45, 46,000. I want things to chill out for a little bit. And then we have that Bitcoin halvening, which nobody's even talking about the Bitcoin halvening yet, which is like, if it wasn't for this ETF, we would only be talking about the halvening. That's the beauty of what's going on in the market right now. We got a pump before the pump. You know, it's, this should not be happening. This is all because of the ETF. If it wasn't for the ETF, we'd have countdown clocks on every YouTuber's channel right now talking about three more months to the halvening, then we're going to go bullish. But because of the ETF, we went bullish early. So the question is, we are kind of in uncharted territory right now. Um, there's no more catalyst in Bitcoin and crypto until the halvening. So we have three months, I think, of this. I think we're going to get pumps. We're going to get thumps. We're not going to go to all-time highs until after the happening, folks. 
I don't think we're going to go above 50,000. Maybe we'll get some crazy pump where we hit 50, then dump right back down to 45. I don't think the altcoins are going to do anything too crazy. Everybody's talking about the Ethereum narrative. You're going to have cer certain altcoins going crazy, like Hex and Pulse Chain because they didn't pump yet. And of course, Richard Hart is fighting the SEC. And as what happens, just like with XRP, with, with I can tell you guys right now, with Richard Hart and Hex and Pulse Chain, when he has a good day in court, Hex and Pulse Chain are going to pump. When bad news comes out, it's going to dump. It's going to be just like with XRP. So you're going to have big pumps, big dumps, and these smaller cap coins but I'm not seeing anything major happen. I mean, the ETF is great news. It's a big step for Bitcoin. It also means the big funds are in now. They can easily manipulate it. Um, and that might be another reason Bitcoin doesn't go to all-time high or doesn't have much much more than a $100,000 run because all the big funds are in it right now. And it can also be heavily manipulated. They can dump it when they want. But other than the ETF news, the next real, the next big thing is the halvening, and that's why I think Bitcoin found a nice base right now. It's, you know, the all we're only twenty thousand dollars from the all time high. These all coins are nice, nice, nice levels for these all coins. I think these all coins are going to slowly make their way up. Uh, if you notice that Solana really only went up a couple dollars during this Bitcoin pump, and Cardano went up like it went up fifteen percent. It was all the way up to sixty one cents earlier. So if you'll notice. The, what did I say was going to happen with Solana a couple weeks ago? I said, the money's been made in Solana, and now when altcoins start to pump, it's going to be other altcoins while Solana takes a back seat, and that's exactly what's happening. So everything we've talked about is coming true. Just to recap, what do I think is going to happen? Like I've already said, I think we got that, that pump, and I think we're now we're going to level out and dump, and I think we're going to hang out here. I don't think we're going to $50,000. I don't think we're going to all-time highs. I hope I'm wrong. I have no problems being wrong about this. I'll come on. I want to be wrong. I want Bitcoin to go to 100000 tomorrow. I just don't think it's happening. I think this, like I said, I think the, the narrative is over. You are getting some Ethereum uh, pumping. So you're probably going to see some Ethereum coins pumping leading up to the happening. But I think leading up to the happening, we're going to be between forty dollars and $48,000 for Bitcoin, maybe $50,000. And then I think these altcoins are going to be kind of being very volatile, but slowly making their way up. All right, guys. Cool. ETF is over, never to be mentioned again because I'm sick of it. And right now we're counting down to the, that happening. And every day every day right now in Bitcoin is simply going to be news-based. If we get good news, we're going to get a pump. Not so good news, a dump. And then we're going to get the happening. And that's going to be the next big narrative where everybody flies into Bitcoin. And maybe that'll take us to all-time highs. You know, I was listening to somebody saying, is it possible we could be at all-time highs? for the pump leading up to the halvening. And it is possible only because Bitcoin has already pumped so much. Bitcoin without the ETF would only be at like 30, 35,000 right now. It is possible we're at $65,000 by the halvening in April. But if you're going to follow what Bitcoin has traditionally done in other cycles, we're probably not going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, to all time highs until three to six months after the halvening. And the reason I say three months versus six, usually at six months, but since this whole ETF thing pumped Bitcoin up so high, maybe it could happen as short as three months after the happening. But I don't think we're getting all-time highs until at least the happening or a couple months after. I could be wrong. All right, guys. You'll never hear me say ETF again. All right. Like and subscribe. I'll see you later.